Welcome. This is my story growing up smoking weed. Hope it helps you. I started smoking weed when I was 12 years old. It was March of 77. I just turned 12 and I had just become interested in girls and I felt a little bit inadequate. I wasn't socially gifted. So I thought I needed to be a little cooler and all the older kids were smoking weed and uh, they seemed to be making out with girls that uh, interested me. So I started smoking weed. I went with, with some older guys to the Highlands Park Bridge in Laguna Niguel, California in the uh, 1977, like I said before. I didn't feel that much the first time. This kid skateboarded up next to me and one of the older kids goes, are you stoned? And I go, I don't know. And he goes, you look stoned. <laughs> skateboarded off. And um, yeah, that's how it started. And I actually got busted right away. I got in trouble with my, my parents. Um, my brother and I shared a room together and he was growing 18 pot plants in the room and he told my parents that they were tomato plants. And one day we were out on the side yard weeding, which is kind of funny. And my parents' friend was with us, this woman who knew a lot about plants. And she looked over in our room and she goes, oh my God, those are marijuana plants. My brother goes, no, they're not, they're tomato plants. And she started laughing. She's like, who told you that? Those are marijuana plants. And it got really quiet. My dad, I could tell he was uh, pissed, but he didn't say anything at that point. And a couple days later, I, I heard him uh, giving my brother the third degree that night. And um, my dad took me and did the best that he could. He took me a couple days later and in the car and and he sat me down and, and we talked for, uh, it was a while. And he, you know, just really asserted that I, to, to, for me to not go down that path. And I, um, I wanted to be a good kid. I did. I wanted to be a good kid. And so I, I told all the kids in the neighborhood that I wasn't going to smoke weed anymore. And, uh, I was kind of shunned immediately, and I was okay with that though, because I wanted to be a good kid. It was important for me to be a good kid, and I knew, you know, uh, smoking weed wasn't being a good kid. A few months later, I remember it was just getting to be summer, and I was home alone. I was playing like Nerf ball with a ping pong paddle in my room, and I was all alone. And I looked outside. My parents were gone out to dinner, and my brothers all had friends, and I saw the neighborhood kids walking by and they were going to do their you know 70s party thing and I just felt all alone and I started smoking weed again and at that point I really split I kind of started living a double life you know I had to lie at that point I couldn't tell my parents the truth anymore I was immediately accepted with my friends but I couldn't tell my parents that I was smoking weed again. So I had to lie to them. And I got in the habit of smoking weed pretty early daily. You know, I remember when I was like 13, I remember going to get high. And I thought to myself, oh my God, I smoke weed every single day. And um, that continued for a long time. But um, weed, uh, you know, I... It, it handicapped me, and a lot of ways I really didn't like it. Um, I wasn't socially gifted to begin with, but man, when I got stoned, I couldn't even talk. I would just turn red and just be the most uncomfortable person in the world around people, you know? The other side of it was, I mean, I did enjoy being by myself when I smoked weed going out in the hills with my friends. I did enjoy that, you know, we didn't talk much, but I didn't have to out in the hills and 
and hiking and at the beach and the beach was a nice place to get smoke weed you know the water get more sensual the other thing i did enjoy as a kid was i really started getting into music and really started to listen to a lot of different kinds of music and and we changes the way that you listen to music it sounds more interesting it sounds more sensual it's it has more meaning to it um, at least that's what it felt like but socially and academically oh it just handicapped me oh and i was hanging out with older guys who were just not that they just weren't real positive kids you know they were just uh yeah and i just um all through high school, I smoked weed every day at school, and I wanted to like talk to girls, and I couldn't really talk to girls because I was high all the time. And so then I started to drink because when I drank, I could talk to girls, but that was only on the weekends. And um, so I had this like really uncomfortable upbringing. I mean, it was um, lying to my parents, trying to pretend like I was pulling it off at school with other kids around but god I just felt like a moron and it just it my esteem was just taking a beating all the time the, the saving grace I had was I was a really good athlete and uh, I was still doing good at sports even though I was smoking weed a lot and again I do have some regret there because who knows you know I mean and I ended up getting a scholarship and um, performed at a very high level in my sport and who knows what could have been I uh, have had I gone to the solo to the to the to the tennis club rather than hang out with the weed smokers and have friends you know but who knows I could have been like a total antisocial angry <laughs> who knows you, know, you can't go backwards but um, but it did yeah smoking weed handicapped me and academically oh I hated school to begin with you know I was an athlete. I needed to move around. I needed to be outside. And I had an older brother who was really gifted uh, academically, and I was I kind of like uh, compared myself to him, and I was couldn't even compare there. So I so I hated school even before I smoked weed. But I think God, smoking weed going to school is an absolute nightmare. Just sitting in that class, just can't talk. You can't pay attention. And it's just like dead time in life. It was just a nightmare. It was horrible. And, 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 and the thing that's so painful about it is I just kept smoking weed. It just became a habit. And, um, you know, the, there was times, you know, that I did enjoy it. Skateboarding was fun. Like I said, going to the beach was fun. Being by myself was okay. But, but it definitely handicapped me. And, and, and I went to college and, and played tennis in college and fell right in with the weed smokers. And I knew it was handicapping me, and I knew it was shutting me down, and I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't break the habit, you know. And part of me wanted to, and I remember trying a few times, and I remember one time I did, it was 11 days. For some reason, I could get, not smoke weed for 11 days when I was trying to stop. And I thought I was doing great, and I, oh, I'm doing so great 11 days, just take a bong hit. And I'd take a bong hit, and man, it felt so good after not smoking it for a while. It was just like, oh my God, music sounded better. You felt your body. It was just epiphanies and creative ideas for five minutes, and then you're just like a stone moron afterwards. For me, you know, I mean, I, I see some people do really well on weed, and uh, that just wasn't me, you know. See Willie Nelson, I mean, he's had a pretty good career. And he's obviously, uh, you know, well known for his weed smoke. Snoop Dogg, you know, I'm sure a lot of other artists. Um, but uh, that wasn't my story. You know, weed handicapped me and really I had some serious consequences in my life. I, I knew internally, I knew I could be doing better. And so I, I would have this like just angst about, life just knowing I could be doing better and um, and that there's got to be a more positive road for me there's just got to be and I would just feel terrible about myself and 
take a couple of bong hits, and all of a sudden that didn't matter. It would go away. I mean, that's what weed is great for. If you want to do nothing and just be okay with doing nothing with your life, weed's perfect. But that only lasts for like 20 minutes, if that. And then you're just like stoned the rest of the day and you can't do anything. And I did that for so many years, it's embarrassing. I remember even in my 30s. And then I was stuck in the narrative that, that I was a victim. You know, I, I remember in my 30s, I was with a friend and packing the bong and I told him, I go, man, I never had a chance, man. I started smoking weed at 12. You know, right, right as I'm saying that, I'm 30s, I mean, I'm 55 now. It's like, God, that was young. I had my whole life ahead of me, you know? the whole life, but a ton of life, and uh, wow, and I was just blind to it, just stuck in that, in that cycle, and, you know, the thing that I did learn, though, is, uh, you know, I finally started to get some time off of weed, and, and, and I, um, and everything else, because, uh, yeah, I mean, I just couldn't live that way anymore. But what started to happen was um, the challenges of the habits that I developed, which was, um, you know, not really applying myself to things. I did pretty good with my sport, but I really didn't with everything else. You know, in relationships, was were, I had an inability to have real relationships with people because I could, would just compulsively detach by smoking, by medicating, because I just didn't want to deal with things. What, what started to happen when I would get some time off of it was, and, and I'm talking like a year, uh, several times, what started to happen was I started to realize that, wow, I still kind of have a lot of the same habits not smoking weed that I do have when I smoke weed. So it's not like a, so quit smoking weed is not like a, panacea. It's not like everything's going to automatically. See, I was naive. I thought, okay, that's my problem is the weeds part. And as soon as I get off weed, I'm just going to take off and just like be super accomplished and set goals and work on them consistently and be super successful at everything I put my mind to. And what I found was I, I, I still couldn't apply myself and it was frustrating. And and so I thought, well, it's not the weed. And then I would smoke weed again. And it was like, and when you haven't smoked weed in a while and you smoke weed, the effects are just uh, profound. I mean, again, it's, you have these epiphanies. And, but then, I mean, literally that lasts such a short time. And then you're again, that beat down. And it's like a, it's a depression, man. When you're in that weed cycle, of smoking weed and, and, and trying to manage it. For me, I mean, some people seem to live a relatively positive life and are fine with it. I just couldn't do it. And I would get depressed and just be depressed for years and, and medicate to deal with it. This is part of the like emotional work I have to do to, to heal from those years, I remember this, this abundance affirmation that one of them was to uh, heal the years the locusts have eaten, <laughs> which I, I related to that because that's kind of what the weed addiction and the behaviors associated with weed, they, they do. They're like locusts that eat away at your life. That's my point of view. You know, I, you know, you you make your own decisions, um, but obviously, if you're if you're watching a video like this, you're probably questioning um, whether, yeah, you know, you know. The good news is you don't have to smoke weed. You can change, and you can start setting goals, and you can start outgrowing those old habits, 
And it's not comfortable, but change isn't comfortable. But it's possible. For me, I want to live the rest of my life with some meaning and purpose. And that's really what was lacking in my life that kind of uh, led me to weed in the first place, was I really didn't, you know, my only desire was some outside validation. And, and then just to manage my emotions. It's, it, that's not my purpose and meaning anymore. My meaning and purpose is to be authentic, is to tell the truth, is to do the best I can to, to help other people and to be free of that past. That's my story. And I hope that it helped you. If it helped you at all, um, please subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the uh, comment section down below. And uh, like I said, I hope that helps you. Much love.